So as you guys might have guessed, uh, we are going to work toward making our little guy move left, right, and up and down. And of course, we were just playing around uh, with one of the, uh, or watching this from one of the free videos that are out there. You don't have those assets, well, um, hopefully by now you've figured out the website you can go to to uh, go grab all those. Try not to shamelessly plug it here. Uh, so anyway, we... Um, We've got, uh, or I've, uh, between the video breaks, I've added in here some more swipe gesture recognizers, and you can see that uh, I've commented out some of the other ones that we have, just really don't need them now. Uh, so we've got uh, right, left, up, and uh, down, and they're calling swipe up, swipe down, swipe left, right. Okay, so that's not, not too hard to figure out. Now, uh, we've got uh, functions for each one of these, and you can see at the moment I'm just printing out right, left, up, and down. And if you remember from way back when, we had this function called move down. And you'd think, well, okay, this is easy enough. You know, what we could do is uh, just copy it out and, uh, you know, make a function called move up, move left, move right. Uh, if we do that, we're going to be repeating uh, a fair amount of the same uh, code, right? Um, and certainly, actually, really, most of it, other than uh, some of the simple values in here. So what we'll end up doing is uh, we'll change this um, function around just a little bit, so it's uh, it can be used for each one of those particular directions. And uh, we're going to pass in some parameters here, so or properties, however you want to think about it. Uh, so what we could do is we could say uh, a move, and then with x amount, and then we'll specify that. Uh, when we call this function, uh, what we're going to pass in there's going to be a CG float type value or a number, okay? Uh, and then we're also going to want to know the with y amount. You comma separate these. Again, you just got to specify that this is going to be, um, you know, what type thing it's going to be. And actually in Swift, you can put in here any, um, yeah, any. But uh, that doesn't make too much sense for us <laughs> in this particular case. But we know that we're going to be passing a number in here. And then um, and then let's also put in here with uh, animation, okay? Uh, in this case, we're going to go with a string. Now, this is going to replace this right here. So before we start calling these, what we want to do is, um, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't really need to put with in here. I guess now I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's do this. Let's change it just slightly. Let's say the animation. How about the Y amount, uh, the X amount. That way, when we um, actually use these properties, it doesn't look so weird. So uh, now when we say SK action move by X amount, the X amount. There you go. That makes more sense, right? The Y amount, and of course, um, the animation. All right. Uh, and then let's take a look how we can call this. So again, let's go back and pick on the one that we um, kind of previously set up before here. So, so swiping down, we'd want to move, you know, call move. And then uh, when you start to um, you know put the parentheses in there, you'll notice that down here we've got you know basically the function. So it says, uh, oops, I move the x amount, and in this case, uh, for moving down, we don't want to put anything on there, so we'll just put zero. Again, negative 100, that's what we had uh, previously. And then for the string value, that's just what we had before, right? Walk front. And we can just copy this uh, and then kind of do some reverses, right? So uh, if you're going to move up, this is going to be 100. And in this case, we'll change front to back. I've already had gone ahead uh, between the video breaks and set up uh, different, uh, you know, animations or animation actions for the uh, left, right, and walking back. And you can see that, obviously, along with that, I've got some quite a few more animation frames over here. Uh, so let's go back over this way. Do, do, do. And if we're going to walk left, that means that we want to subtract 100 on the x-axis and none on the y. So we're going to go walk left. And then we just got one more of these to do. All right, and again. Okay, now we should have our little guy walking around. Uh, I'm going to go back over here to the view controller and, sh and turn physics off. I don't see. I don't feel like we get as clear of a view of this guy walking. Those little subtle uh, foot movements with that on, and here we go. Fire up the old trusty um, simulator, and uh, we'll get to these what these little red boxes are doing here in just a moment. I forgot to 
I delete them out from when I was working ahead. But uh, yep, there we go. You can see walking around. And you know what? I, I don't mind um, what's happening right here where basically he, he moves a certain way and then he goes back and he faces uh, front toward the camera again. Uh, but um, that could be one of those cases where, again, we could pass in um, – maybe even another property over here and then inside of uh, our finish block then we run a, a basically an idling animation of him in that particular direction right so and again if you wanted to do that it would really just be a matter of doing everything you've already got and then making a idle animation action to run at the end of it but i, I kind of I, I think it's fine as is and i might even think it's a little bit better um, so, uh, so yeah, and you can see obviously that, uh, from the last video, I just, uh, removed that code that, uh, was, you know, kind of hypothetically triggering wind, the wind effect on them. It didn't look as good when, uh, all the other four directions were, or three directions were in there. Okay. So what we're going to do now, uh, we got plenty of time left is, uh, do a little bit of, uh, physics, uh, detection. And, uh, that was kind of what you saw with those boxes on there. I was playing around with that, but, uh. Let's go and start this from the top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a little delegation method uh, to our the class, which basically just means that this class is going to uh, commit to doing a little bit more than it already is, right? Uh, so we're going to say SK Physics. Oh, let's write it on there. Contact delegate. Okay. Uh, right after you write that, uh, be sure you come down in here to, into your did move to view statement. Just say self dot physics world dot contact delegate is going to equal self and then let's see why are you complaining about that okay uh, then what we can do is we can I tend to kind of work at uh, the bottom of the screen for all this physics contact stuff but uh, we could just put a little marker in here so we'll just say physics contacts all right I think I do that just because a lot of times I'm going back and forth between one thing and another. I just kind of scooch all the way down to the bottom. Uh, so what we can do uh, now is put in here uh, a func and then did. And you'll notice as soon as you begin typing that, you should, you'll probably see did begin and then underscore contact, SK physics, physics contact. Um, so this will this is a function that's basically, you know, come included here with sprite kit it's not a new one that i'm making obviously uh and uh that's for detecting the beginning of uh two objects that have physics properties or bodies um connecting with each other right and you can also change or i could also detect uh did uh, end right hey how about that right but let's just worry about uh did begin okay so Um, to kind of move forward with this, what we're going to need to do is uh, is specify what physics bodies we actually kind of care about um, connecting with each other. Okay, otherwise it would be this kind of big old mess if we really just cared about everybody touching everybody in the world. Uh, so to do that, we are going to well, there's a couple ways we can do it. Um, I'll show you one way, which would be uh, to go over here to your game scene file and to set up your contact or your category mask uh, in the, the scene editor, which in many cases is just fine. You could put it, punch in a number here, zero, one, two, four. They're supposed to be in powers of two. So then it would be like eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on like that. All, all the way on up to, well, this is obviously just some kind of jumbly number that they threw in here. Um, and these, uh, and, and so basically what we end up doing is we, is we specify the category mask, and then in our did begin contact function, we test to see if those particular masks are connecting with each other, if they're touching each other. So basically it's like, is a zero touching a one? If so, we care about that. So run some code. Or is a two touching a four? And so on like that. And you can actually specify uh, different fields that, or different masks that, um, that you that you want to ignore, um, or you only care about the the contact of them, not the collision of them, things like that. So uh, let's let's see it in action though with uh, code because I think that's maybe a little bit more to the point. So go back over here to your game scene .swift file, and what we're gonna do is uh, now cut up to the top of the screen. We're gonna um, declare an enum type variable, and this is gonna be 
Let me just type it out for you. It needs to be in this um, unsigned uh, 32 type integer. Just remember integer, how about that? Uh, and uh, with these enums, we're gonna define them like so. We're gonna say case player, and actually start these off, at, I, I think I said zero a moment ago, but start off your category uh, masks at um, one. So the next one then would be, and let's just have a hypothetical building over here. So building would be two, case, you know, something else, right, would be four. And, and so on uh, in that matter. Again, uh, pull a note here. Powers of two. So keep multiplying. Multiplying by two. All right. Uh, now, when we go and um, set up our player down here, we're going to say the player dot physics body dot category bit mask is going to equal and then we put in here our um, body type dot player okay uh, and uh, what we need to work with now is another and actually I'm sorry you put in here raw value uh, next thing we have to do is basically make another type of object so we'll just use some dummy box or something like that uh, but let me kind of uh, go through here and, and, and keep this going keep this thought going for a little bit so uh, to set up your other options here you can put in here a collision bit mask and uh, basically we're, we're specifying that uh, these are things that this particular physics body is allowed to collide with and if you just don't include it in there it's, it's just going to bump into anybody that else that has a basically a dynamic uh, mask to them unless those were kind of ignoring other things as well so um, let's let's pretend that we only care about the buildings that he can run into right maybe the ground has a body or something so anyway we'd, we'd put in here then that you're allowed to connect with buildings and for other things that you want to you know allow him to connect with you put this little uh, pipe symbol over here it's just the one key underneath the delete delete and uh, some something else right okay and uh, the same thing is going to be true for so I'll just copy this line out your contact test bit mask okay so um, these are now going to be um, uh, these are now going to be the the uh, the bodies that we care about the listing for or receiving notifications from in our function that we just kind of set up down here. And you can see that uh, I've got that cat, contact test bit mask code selected up uh, right over here. And it's showing me a mask that defines which categories of bodies cause intersection notifications with this physics body. Okay. So if it touches a building, right, and we have this set up that, okay, yeah, I want to listen now for you touching this building. That's, uh, we're going to get, we're going to know about that. So the code for this is going to look something like this. We'll put in here if uh, contact dot body a dot category bit mask equals body type dot player dot raw value and contact because basically because this contact right here is something that you know comes to us anytime the the, the the function itself is called and the contact has two bodies right basically two properties to it body a and body b right uh, so we're testing each one of their category bit masks and if this other one equals body type dot building dot raw value then we can just say print touched a building okay uh, now when these collisions occur you don't know which one is body a and body b so you always have to test both cases oops so uh, you'll put in here else if and there's you know we could change body a to b and body b to a oops to A, or you could just you know reverse these things over here. But this would this now obviously catches both of those uh, scenarios, and really all we need at this point is a building. So let's go uh, over here to our uh, scene file, and you can see that I've got uh, just uh, you know two um, 
blank color sprites out here. I just all it is, I just dragged one of them, the color sprite out, and I've named it. I've named both of these building. Okay, so they both have the same exact name. Exact name. That's fine. In sprite kit. Two ch children can have the same name, and a lot of times you want that. Uh, and I'm going to give them slightly different um, uh, physics uh, properties over here, but both of them have a, a, a body type of a bounding rectangle. And you can see that uh, for this one, I, I left dynamic checked on and uh, allows uh, rotation checked on. And this one, it doesn't have them on. But otherwise, these guys are the same. And I'm not going to put in a category bit mask over here. I'm going to do that with... Uh, do that with code. So head back over here to the uh, to the game scene. Do, do, do. Come up here. That's uh, there we go. All right. So basically, what I need to do now is uh, is iterate through the children in the scene and see which ones are um, that will basically have a name of body. Okay. So I'm going to say um, I could say something like for possible building. Okay in self dot children okay and then if possible building dot name equals building okay and then what we also want to test is if it is that is a particular type of class all right so we're going to set just make sure that because we can't really monkey around with the physics properties on a camera if just by just by some mistake you made a camera with the building name on it, right? So you want to go in here and say if building is, and there's probably more, much more refined ways of doing this, but we'll we'll put in there if building is SK sprite node, uh, and one of those refined ways would be actually making a, a particular building class. But let's just keep going with this. So if building is SK sprite node, then what we're gonna do is say, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be possible building. If uh, if possible building is SK sprite node, then possible building dot physics body dot category bit mask equals body type dot building dot raw value. And we can say uh, print found a building because there's really nothing in the scene that's going to indicate right away that th this was a success. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, you know run that. All right, uh, and this is not correct. There we go. All right, ready to give it a shot. Uh, if it works, when our guy connects with a building, we should see a print statement that says touch the building. And I guess the only kind of neat thing about this is uh, this one can be moved around by the little guy. All right, so you can see touch the building, and you're basically get the, gonna get that anytime he kind of runs into the thing. Right now, here's a real test. Let's get this one out of the way. Can we go back over here now and do the same thing to this one? Yep, sure enough. But this time around, remember this is a really inflexible building. It's not gonna, it's it. It can't be moved around in the physics simulation, and its dynamic is off. But um, but we still get that uh, physics co uh, connection over there. We're still listening out for the contact of it, and you can see that when this first ran, it, it, uh, we uh, yeah found a building is uh, was run twice, right? Because remember that was the the statement that uh, we put in here for that. So you know if you were to go in and uh, you know you kind of made this generic building type you can just go and kind of keep copying these out a bunch of times and uh, now you have some sort of block pushing game right <laughs> but uh, again there's uh, you know there's so many ways to do everything but uh, hey you know what that's kind of an easy one right just copy and paste it around there we go so and obviously when this first ran we got that uh, found a building five times Okay, so we'll come back with uh, more in the next video.